Thomas, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. similar to the existing one, but will be a little bit easier for them to maintain, and then they'll be replacing the signs, um, and, which I'm not a good one to talk about that, but um, they're replacing it with a different material. So the signage will still be there, the sponsorship will still be there, but they just won't be the same material. Um, they would require a building permit for the fencing and for the stairs. Uh, the siding and the, the roof does not require it. Um, but then, depending on how expensive they get on the inside remodel, that would. So they are requesting a fee waiver ordinance for that. Now, I have to tell you, those stairs were brand new when Councilman Smith and I were 12 years old running up and down. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty nice, weren't they? Yeah. Sure they they have lasted a long time. Wow, what is that, this? Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the signing check. I mean, no signs. It's kind of almost like that's the flavor for that. The lead goes way, 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 way back. Will the new signage kind of replicate that? I think they're trying to. I think that's the whole point. But then I think they also, they must have had a request with, um, you know, Freddie would, or Matt Reinhardt would be a better person to explain this. So I apologize if I get it wrong. But my understanding, they must have had a request for maybe a sponsor that had a child, a friend, a grandchild on one of the other leagues that they wanted to move the sponsorship to a different, you know, location, you know, to kind of support their teams, you know, their child, grandchild's teams. So I think the idea is that, you know, they can be moved, you know, if they, if they want to be, if they need to be. Um, you know, it's also a lot more cost effective than the previous material. So they can actually go out and retain more sponsors, hopefully, because it will be more cost effective. So I think they really looked at it in depth and they understand the nostalgia, nostalgia and um, you know the love everybody has for that look, but they're trying to duplicate it in a little bit more cost-effective, friendly way, and then also a way to you know integrate it into the other teams. Yeah, those four by eight sheets of plywood were always fun to work with. <laughs> right. Kind of yeah. Okay. Any uh, questions for Casey? Are, are we doing these one at a time? Yeah, however you want to do it, Councilman right. Smith. I would. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd make a motion to approve the waiver for the Rochester Youth Movement. I'll second. Motion made by Smith, seconded by Garrett. Those in favor signify by raising the right hand. And that's the And then 
and the Rochester Times Theater, um, they would like to they would like to get an electrical permit. What they'd like to do is maybe start showing movies again in there, or having events in the theater. And one of the things we've requested is to make sure that the essentials are taken care of and the electrical, making sure it's safe to actually run a concession stand. Um, and then also the emergency lighting uh, for the exits. You know, if there's any kind of movie in here, we want to make sure that, you know, barring any unforeseen circumstances, you know, people can see their way out. And um, so they are actually going to be doing a little bit of electrical work, nothing major, replacing those, those uh, emergency exits with battery backup exit signs and then also checking on the outlets and replacing them as they need them. Uh, maybe putting in a GFI that's close to water, that type of thing. So the electrical permit is $20. Um, every $20 helps when you're a nonprofit, so they'd like to ask for a fee waiver for the electrical permit. Are they keeping the existing service? Yeah, they're not messing with the service at all, just outlets and um, the oh, exit light. Second. Good. Moved by uh, Garrett, second by Clevenger. Those in favor? 5 0. Great. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else for me? No, thanks. Do you want to get, while you're there, do you want to get a quick update on Wayne's, et cetera? Sure. I spoke to both the uh, surveyor uh, that is dealing with the land surveyor, uh, architect engineer, and, uh, and as well as the owner today. He left me, missed each other, but he left me a message uh, returning my call from last week. And basically, the, um, the engineer is working on the plans right now. And what uh, Mr. Brecky said is that basically they had other sites that they were finishing up. And so right now, they're very excited about Rochester. And they have started to work on Rochester diligently. They were trying to figure out how to get a deck onto the restaurant and um, onto the same lot. So they're trying, you know, trying to get everything in that they can, and that he was very excited about it, and the architects were just moving slow. So they got him geared up, and uh, he said hopefully we'll start to see plans moving. I'm going to go burn next time. Get it ready. So yeah, good news. Anything else for Casey? Thank you, Casey. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next thing on the... Uh, and it was a clarification of uh, City Code 99.01B, Open Burning. This is the office golf course request. Hi. As you all know, I'm Jan Sawyer. I'm the treasurer, currently the treasurer at the L2120. Good evening. I'm going to give you a history lesson first because we don't just sit up there and drink beer and play golf. <laughs> Although we do do that too. <laughs> but we don't just do that. Okay. Um, five Rochester residents just decided to obtain ground in order to build a golf course in this area. These men were A.J. Denniston, Percy Smith, H.G. Young, H.G. Miller, and Charles Emmons. If you've been around long enough, you might recognize some of these names. I, I actually threw away some of their stock certificates. When <laughs> my father died. They all had ownership in the country club. Yes. They sold them Started stock as a country club. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they obtained 20 acres of Holden Farm on the east side of the lake, and through their efforts, play began late May 1916 on six fairways and six greens made of tamped sand. Very interesting. I found that. Extremely interesting. Golf course has been in continuous play for nearly 103 years. Um, it's among the oldest courses in the state of Indiana. It's older than French Lick by one year. Um, it's pretty unusual to have a golf course that old in your community, and it's something our community should embrace. <coughs> 60 years ago, in 1959, the course was incorporated as part of the Elks Lodge. The course has been a part of the Rochester community for a very long time, and as far as I know, we are the only golf course in the area within the city limits that's operated by a nonprofit organization. An unusual circumstance. An unusual circumstance. Golf course is the source of income for the Elks. And with this income, in 2018, we provided scholarships to area school students that total $4,500. 
Our community giving included contributions to the RHS wrestling and football programs, Kids Bridge Program, Junior Achievement, United Ministries Basket Program, Christmas Basket Program, Fulton County Animal Adoption Center, Area Scouts and Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts, Filter Dreams, that's in the Patterson Scholarship Fund, Fulton County and Council on Aging, Rochester Fireworks, Compassionate Care, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, and Camp What You Want to Do. That actually is a state-run camp, but we sponsored four students from our area to their parents. Up. It's for special needs students. So we're very diverse in our giving. Um, if we, that was a total of $1,150. This is just this year. Our most, act, most active members also provided 318 hours of community service to other area programs. Statewide, we contribute to the Parade of Nichols that supports our veterans, the Elks Drug Awareness Program, and our ENF funds have gone for cancer research at both IU and Purdue that have totaled over $7 million last year. The Elks has deeded property to this city where the water tower now sits. And then later we extended that property because it was discovered that Fence extended the original property that was given. So we gave that property also. The course depends. So we are a good community helper. Um, the golf course depends on our volunteers. The pro shop, spring cleanup, and fall cleanup are completely run by volunteers. We do hire two and a half people for maintenance of the course and for maintenance of the golf course during the golf carts during the season. Why am I here? <coughs> the Elks does not benefit from city leaf pickup or tree branch removal. The area residents do, but the, uh, the Elks does not. For us to hire leaf and limb removal would be a hardship on our budget and our contributions. However, we are not asking the city to pick up our leaves or our limbs. Um, but because the golf course is also within the city limits, we are not allowed to burn at this time for limbs and leaves. Only. We are asking that the City Council include the golf course in their definition of unusual circumstances and grant us permission to burn limbs and limbs only. We don't burn trash. We have trash removal. We have a dumpster. Um, Board of Works member Rick Figlia, when we went before the Board of Works, expressed a concern about opening a can of worms and that the area residents would want to burn also. There's no reason for them to burn. They have the service, they have leaf pickup, they have tree, uh, limb removal. There's no reason for them to burn, unless they too would have an unusual circumstances, such as a tornado or something, and then of course, they can come to, before the board and ask permission also. So I don't feel that there's a can of worms to be open. So Excuse me, Jan, I, I listened to that recording. I wasn't there. I believe he was also <coughs> of uh, Clarification of what an unusual circumstance so represents. Well, I mean, you want to know where that the, the the board of works is the statutory side of the city. They 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 enforce the laws, the rules, the regulations. This group writes them. Uh, is the judicial part of the equation that writes the ordinances and the zoning regulations and such. And part of that is based on home rule, and part of it's based on. Uh, Indiana statutes do. Uh, and, and Rick made a comment that is an unusual circumstance, your circumstance, or is it a tornado? I think it should be done individually. Why do you have to have a blanket statement for, for all? Each person comes forward and asks for it as an unusual circumstance. Well, I thought it was a good question because our ordinance is 33 years old. Mm -hmm. There's never been an unusual circumstance granted. We were trying to figure out, uh, because this group, nobody was around 33 years ago to make that determination as to what the ordinance involved. So we went to the uh, the item, the state uh, Indiana statute, and it's almost, ours, our, our ordinance reads like the crib sheets for the, uh, the state ordinance. Is that not true, during Perkins? Or yeah, our, our ordinance is, is, is pretty brief. Yeah. The uh, uh, Indiana Administrative Code, something the mayor and I discussed today, um, does provide some uh, similar definitions if you wanted to look to that. As written, your, your city code uh, gives the board of works a lot of discretion. 
Uh, any, any ordinance that's vague allows more discretion. The risk of the, the benefit of the vagueness is uh, you get to uh, fashion the remedy to put the energy in effect. The, the drawback is that it can be so vague, it can, it can be problematic for lack of guidance and lack of notice on people. Um, so the, uh, uh, the state statutes permit IDEM uh, to draft rules. When you hear about rulemaking, you usually hear it at the federal level, but we have it at the state level too. So the General Assembly passed a statute, one of the statutes they passed, called an enabling ordinance. An enabling, or enabling statute, let's An enabling statute is what creates and authorizes a, a department of the state, a department of the executive, in this case, IDEM, to write rules. And the rules, though not passed by the General Assembly, have essentially the effect of law. And there's a period that people can, whenever they modify those rules, people they have to open up for public comment, so forth and so on. So within uh, IDEM's regulations for uh, burning, there's a definition of uh, emergency burning. Now, emergency burning, word for word, isn't the same as unusual circumstances, but I think it's somewhat instructive is, is if you wanted to say, well, what, what might the Board of Works, and I say might, because they're not bound by it, but what might the Board of Works look to for guidance for unusual circumstances? You could look to IDEM's definitions of emergency burning, um, because of, uh, within IDEM's regulations, there is an, uh, an exception uh, for emergency burning. And so that's why they have that. It says, emergency burning means burning of clean wood waste or deceased animals caused by natural disaster or an uncontrolled event such as the following. Tornado, high winds, earthquake, explosion, hailstorm, rainstorm, ice storm. Um, so that, again, I want to stress, Board Works is not currently bound by that definition, but if this council wanted to specify unusual circumstances, that might be one source that it looks to, uh, or what IDEM has formulated for emergency. Um, it, could, it could reformulate the ordinance to provide other things. Um, or it could not change it at all. It could say, well, that's up to the Board of Works, and they can decide you know, however they want to decide. But <clears throat> what the mayor and I kind of discussed this afternoon was the relationship between uh, uh, IDEM and its rules and how those might be applicable. Sometimes, sometimes courts, when they're looking to form a definition that doesn't exist in statute, might look to uh, other definitions and other parts of the law within that jurisdiction or similar definitions. Uh, and so I just thought I would point that out that uh, that's not binding on our, on our city ordinance, but IDEM has gone through the trouble of, of rulemaking and creating some definitions. That's one of them. That might have been the kind of unusual circumstances <coughs> post a post natural disaster type of unusual circumstances. It wasn't. I wasn't, wasn't here in the <coughs> when they did that version. So, but that's kind of when IDEM allowed a burning on Fourth Street. I believe that went through IDM, and you burned it. The city took their refuse, the burned, and th that, that's not been that long ago. We've been shut down. It was six months ago, IDM visited us. Uh -huh. we, burned, we burned nothing anymore. Okay. Uh, that's the thing, in the, in the last two years, we've seen IDEM uh, three times because of different complaints. And uh, so we have, we have just, you know, we don't even go go out to the county and burn anything. The city just doesn't burn any longer. Um, well, it, it is, because, I mean, the, the farmers do get some leeway. Uh, we've spoken with IDEM. That's the other thing. IDEM does have jurisdiction over this. If, if this group would What is IDEM's solution to, to uh, getting rid of your debris? What's their solution? I mean, they give you the rules. What's the solution? You have to handle it in another manner. It's a non Which would be grinding and creating mulch, uh, you know, burying that that type of the situation. Uh, the uh, we we called for some clarification relative to their statute because we said, okay, there's they shut us down, and now this is pretty close to our statute, so it probably came into play ours because of theirs, and. Uh, even if we would grant you under our local ordinance a uh, uh, special circumstance to do that, they would also have to grant you a special circumstance. So, I, 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 would, I would excuse me, but 
let, let's just let's drift away from the burn atmosphere of this and get that word out of out of the out of the context of the whole thing because the city used to um, just on kind of the let's help another at a time of this. It wasn't that many times. I, I can speak of this because I live in the area. I walk by the area. I know what's going on. They, and they, when sometimes they would put the stuff along the side of the road, along Park Road there, and the city at their leisure, when there was time, would pick it up and haul it away. Just to get the burning out of the way. They're, they don't have to burn. They just want it they just want it to go away. Uh, in, in, any, in, any, in, any, in any way that it can. And if it was over on Park Road, and the city at their time, we used to do that. I mean, we used to, oh, it's, it's kind of a, I'm, I'm not saying it was, I thought it was okay because it was kind of a good, you know, you know, helping helping somebody out that helps the community. Uh, the Elks is not the strongest, you know, uh, club in the world that we're struggling out there, but I'm still doing a good job and contributing to the city in a lot of ways. And just to put that stuff along that, the side of Park Road and, for the city to pick it up, that's that's the option that gets us the word "burn" out of out, out of everybody's out of everybody's. And and that, 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 that did stop in the first year of my administration. Uh, we had uh, a pile out there that uh, went halfway down the road over mm -hmm. on the water mm -hmm. tower site. So I don't know how long that had been collecting, but it was there for some time, and I was asked to send the city people out to take care of that. Just coming into office after controversy over ghost employment and improper use of city assets and such, very, very cautious as to what we do with our city resources. Uh, but I, I, I had an ex-mayor, uh, ex-mayor Cook came to me and said, isn't there anything we could do? You know, back in the day we did all this. I said, I don't want to do that with city resources. Uh, there are lots of people in the city of the 6200 that aren't Elks members. Although I am an Elks member and I haven't, I haven't done a donation in some time, so I told him I said I, I will take care of it personally to get rid of that pile, but I can't do it with city assets. So I contracted David Jackson. It cost me three thousand dollars. So I mean, it's it's not when it comes up, it's not a small kind of a job. It's pretty. Decent job. It's a golf course. We don't grind our own golf course stuff. We just hired David Jackson not too long ago to, to take care of our pile that we had developed. Our leaves we mulch. We don't, uh, so we don't we don't use city resources to take care of the city golf course. Well, who paid for for them to mulch at the city? We well, the, hired Jackson. The, the golf the golf course personnel. That that's city. Yeah, it's a city. so you have those funds. Sure, it's just as we do funds. the swimming pool yeah. and when, the yeah, park. It's part of it. it's, paying taxes, and I understand. No, it's a city property. It's a city responsibility. Well, that's where you get your money from, though, to do that. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and we don't have that. We don't right. have that base. That, 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 that property base, yeah, yeah. that mm -hmm. base. So that's uh, that's <clears> that. Yeah. Um, well, I, we're really not ask, asking for indiscriminate burning. We don't just want to go out there and burn every day. We'd like to burn three days in the spring and two in the fall to clean up the course. Um, it is a golf course. Uh, we have set aside three areas um, that are within, none of those areas are within 100 yards of residential. And you have to look for them. one, two, We would coordinate with the fire department when to burn. Obviously, we wouldn't burn on windy days, and uh, no fires would be ever. We, no fires are ever left unattended, and we don't expect the fire department to stand there with us. We have people who do that. And burning on the horse is a lot easier because we have people who live around the horse, and it's just a lot easier to be out there. We can also post that we have notice of permission to do that. So I'm still asking for uh, permission to, to burn uh, limited in order to help the course. It's been a part of this community for 103 years. I'd hate to see it go down the tube, but it's actually part of, it's part of our community. It has been for a long time. And like um, 
John said, it's times are tough and with the I think all lodges because it's just that's just the way it is right now. When I had Monty Barnes approach me at a meeting the other night and said he had given permission for the Elks to mm -hmm. drag the stuff half a mile over to his property and burn it, which he's in the county. Mm -hmm. uh, and did you, did you take advantage of that Saturday or was that? But actually, Kent Mills is the one who, he's a little closer. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Kent's got property in the county. Across yeah. the street. Yeah. A little closer. But we're an aging population of volunteers. When you load up all that stuff and, 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 and transport it, it's, it really, it's very difficult for our volunteers to do that. I mean, there, there were people, David was out there. Was that fun? <laughs> That's a lot of hard work. part of the aging community. <laughs> 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 part of you just lost my support. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, it is, it is difficult and it, it does pr present a hardship being on being able to burn on the course. Which certainly helped us quite a bit. I think it helps. It's been a good community. community. Um, I think when people come into this community or look at this community, you can only say we have an Elks Lodge. Yes. Um, you mentioned that there were three days in the spring and two in the fall. Is that correct? Yes. Do you have those dates? That would be that would be dependent upon okay. the weather. I mean, okay. you know, we would what we do, would do is gather our, our refuge and then the times are good to burn. Do you know if it would be like in a March thing it then? It would be like now. Okay. This is, this is actually spring cleanup time. So the end of March. You have a gentleman with you. I'm, I'm Greg Glass and I'm a new trustee at Yelp. I've been a member for four or five years now. And I've kind of been in charge of this. And Attorney Perkins mentioned ice storms, wind storms. We had a lot of that this year. And there is much more down this year. I've been out there working in December and January by myself picking up stuff so that we could get to the smaller stuff. And it's there's a lot out there for us to haul <coughs> off, oh, or for you, if you were going to haul it off. Let me tell you what $3,000 looks like. Yeah, I, saw, a lot. I it's saw that a lot. pile. I helped pick some of that up, yeah. so I know. Yeah. Um, it, it would just make things so much easier for us having to haul it all off. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Greg, and I empathize with you, like and, I said. And I, I think where, where we got in, got wrong, we cut down a big pine tree this year that's been dead for three or four years on number three close to the road and we had one behind the practice screen. And rather than, we hauled a lot of it off, but we were trying to burn it there at that stump, <coughs> trying to get it in that stump, and it was closer to the road. And we made a mistake probably doing that. We should have hauled it back to yeah. the back part of the course nice. where nobody knew. And uh, that's what we're asking to be able to do, maybe a couple times a year. Very back police chief smile. I I saw that three years ago. I know it was, it was a tough thing to deal with him. And I talked to Paula Garcia back then three years ago and I said, Paula, I said, Okay, I can't come to you every year and do three thousand dollars worth of removal. I'm not asking you to no, 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 I understand that. But what I'm trying to explain to you, this council can go ahead and vote on that. And that takes care of your local ordinance. But the first call that IBM is involved in, they'll be down here talking to you because they have to give you the approval also. Right? The this council can't approve her request. The Board of Works has to approve her request. Well, the Board of Works. This okay. council can amend the uh, ordinance so that the Board of Works has a, a, a different or workable, clearer, or whatever uh, standard uh, if it wants to do that. But even if the Board of Works can approve it, nothing the city does affects IDEM's approval or rejection process, that's a completely different process. And so I don't want anyone to leave the Board of Works. If, if someday you check that box for somebody and you need a special exception, I don't want someone to presume that they can just show that to IDEM and, and burn anything they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, game. we found that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, one, no one is exempt us. That's right, that's right. Um, well, there's a permit process to IDEM. There is. Did you have to go through? Uh, so that you would have to get permitted through them is, is what 
they're trying to say before you were able to. They're going. They're just going to go to rule. You can't because they're not local. They don't know the circumstances <coughs> like you you guys do. So they'll just say no. But, it, it, but, but what we're saying, Greg, is they do have the statutory power to do that in one call, and they shut you down and find you. Is is the way that works. Uh, the the uh, I would help go through the process, Jan, with uh, if if the council agrees to an interpretation that your situation covers the ordinance interpretation. We go back to the board of works with that, and see if we get the local part of it taken care of, and then try to help you with the the IDEM part. But it's probably going to be difficult. They yeah, don't have anywhere in the state where they're burning within the uh, incorporated areas. Within the state, anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Chief I, Butler, you know that. I would have all due respect to you and, and to the Elks, and I've enjoyed it a long time myself. But I'd have I'd be hard pressed to support something that allows burning in the city. I mean, it just hasn't happened for 30 years, and we're going to be, I think we are opening them. I mean, every, everybody can have a special circumstance, and I, I don't know what the best answer is, but if, <coughs> the minute we allow burning, uh, just knowing what the reaction we have to other exceptions that we make, that the people that will come forward with complaints of, uh, of irritants and things, uh, even though it's just wood, uh, there are a lot of people that don't tolerate that. So, they don't tolerate it well. I, I'm, I'm str I struggle with this one because I, you guys are good stewards of the city. There's no question about that. The history's there. But. Well, and what was it? Was it? A, has it been a year or was it a year and a half ago, Lenny, where the county just went through this over on Park Road? Uh, I think the school, I, about a year and a half. A year and a half at the school in Ivy Tech, and they had to propose <coughs> legislation because the that's where the split is. Uh, Park Road is one side of it, the high school side is city, the other side is county. And they had to uh, impose some legislation to extend the no burning ordinance that went, to, I think, right over to Sweet Gum Road, yeah. around that area, because of the school and such. So. I had uh, one more question. I noticed on the map you, the three locations you're trying to stay away from the streets. Um, did, I don't know if you met, maybe already mentioned, because um, you said something about the fire department observing it while it was going on. Have you talked with Chief Butler and has he reviewed the locations or um, has any of I don't know if he's aware of the locations. I presented them at the Board of Works. You did not look at those. Did not. Okay, I'd be really interested in knowing what Chief Butler's input was as well prior to um, supporting any amendment to an ordinance. Um, but I am open to hearing well, initially, the initial call when I talked to them out there, when they said they had some some damage, some from dead trees, that was a gray area in the emergency burning. And so I, I, I told them at that time to come to the Board of Works and ask. Once you said that you want to do scheduled burning, it's no longer an emergency burning. You're planning a burn effect. So so that wipes out what the state statute says that fits the bill of an emergency burn because you're <coughs> scheduling it's now a maintenance burn if you call idem to to get a state they're not going to allow that unless you forego a whole bunch of other steps one of them would be to ascertain an air curtain like um mr belcher had to do south of town and what they did on 300 which is where you dig a hole you have these blowers come in you fill the hole, you light it, and the blowers blow in, and it burns it off. And with the extra oxygen, there's little to no smoke, and, and that's what IDEM will pass as the exception for, for open burning. So you, you'd have to contract a, an air curtain. So I'm not sure what the air curtain costs versus a tub grinder either way. But like I said, once, once you said you want to schedule this, 
it no longer fits the state statute as an emergency burn. It becomes a maintenance burn. And now it's an inconvenience of a monetary a value and not an emergency, the way the state statute is written. Thank you. Good clarification. Hope that helps. <clears throat> Didn't help us much. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, I, you know, I, I, didn't write, I, I, didn't, I didn't write the law. Yeah, no. Andy, does it specify anywhere time frame? Because he's right, we have had periods of high winds, so I could see this one time falling under that emergency situation, but not going forward. But, you know, how far removed are we from those winds? I mean, I know we still have stuff down from it. Well, it wouldn't solve the problem long term, but you know it, it does. You know, we've had those high winds. There's no time frame in your words. If you're asking what the administrative code says in their definition, uh -huh. it only says caused by a natural disaster. There's no time <coughs> code to the definition of emergency burning. And we did experience a lot more damage this spring because of all of those high winds. There was much more damage than we've ever had before. I mean, we had several truckloads. So how's the current situation then as far as what you have left to burn? Are you up to par? Do you, no, we still you? have some. We have a pretty good sized pile out there. We're going to have to haul off someplace if we can't burn it. And we still have about five or six holes to clean up yet yeah, from leaves and sticks. Is that typically what you've done in the past then? Just moving it somewhere else to burn? Or maybe you mentioned Typically that, you've been hear. burning on the course. Oh, okay. So you have... <laughs> it's been happening. Oh, okay. Don't, yeah, they, yeah. they fessed up the other yeah, day. Yeah, okay. it's been right. happening. Yeah. I mean, you know, we try to be yeah. careful. I mean, we have been. Okay. This was the only complaint we've had. And we got caught. And we got caught. We had a complaint the other day. There it is. Uh, yeah. Anybody wants some great big pine stumps, you can come yeah, and get them. <laughs> There's but a bunch of them out there stacked. Like I said, now we do haul to a, a volunteer, one of the Elks members who's volunteered his ground out, of, out in the county. So, but it is really difficult. So, well, yeah. thank you for your time. Well, I have one question here. Do we have a uh, chipper coming up? Uh, Option? Um, not that I know not of. That we, know of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got two of them. <laughs> nope. <clears throat> yeah, we'll have to check into that. Unfortunately, we will have to be some changes in our budget. So, thank you for your time. Well, if you want to change your mind, please let us know. Well, just one, one question. You guys are a nonprofit, I assume 501c3. Mm -hmm. Have you reached out to some of the youth? I mean, you're talking about labor. I mean, you know, like the softball, soccer, they're always looking for projects. I mean, you could probably get those kids. I just found mission. out from one of the, uh, we did have some younger people there with their parents and found out that Amy Blackburn does a uh, volunteer thing that the kids have to have so many hours of Community, community service, mm -hmm. yeah. community service. Yeah. So I will reach out. And to you guys are providing scholarships. It makes sense for you know, reach out to that demographic. Something we haven't thought about. That's a great idea. We've been trying to do get more youth involved. Mm -hmm. That guy right back there, the, the wrestling team, they do a lot of that too, don't they? Yeah, we've had the wrestling team come help us. They help us with we peers and things. With peers yeah. and things. We try to support them. They're a good group. Teaching these kids some, some valuable lessons, but just don't include wrestling. What about community corrections? Um, Through probation. And we had a very nice turnout, but you know, and, and I don't know how many times I've, you can, I, Mr. Mills' is property, you can't, I can't continue, we can't continue to burn there all the time. I mean, it's going to get full. <laughs> and yet that will be buried, you know. Our problem is not getting it cleaned up. We'll yeah. get the help to get yeah. it cleaned up. But, but, Our problem is what to do with it. Yeah. So, that's, that's killing us. That's, so, I have the feeling. If, if you had the equipment, would you would you have people capable to run a chipper? Oh, you, my yes. Chipping? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we could probably find people that would. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> why, don't, why, don't, why don't we get a, a fundraising situation going for that? 
that'd be nice, but we've had fun raising things for pumps that went out and <laughs> golf carts that we need. Yeah, that's and new mowers. Doing, um, roofs. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, just never ending. Yeah. Things have just, you know, it's just, uh, the Elks has not had um, good maintenance, I wouldn't say, as far as it's, uh, things that have needed to be taken care of for quite a while until this current board has come in. Jan, and you know, the stuff I told you I found in my dad's office when he passed away going clear back to when it was the country club. Mm -hmm. They've been in financial problems from day one. It's yeah. been a hand-to-mouth situation yeah. from day one. I was trustee for a while. We were always scrambling for, yeah. you know, we had a kitchen. We'd done our clothes down kitchen, yeah. and uh, yeah. had, had the community come to our aid well, there. That's why our golf course is important. It is our source of income. The kitchen doesn't make any money. That's a, lot, that's a losing proposition. That's only open for the members and the community to them to be able to come out with the Elks and enjoy the Elks and maybe think they want to be members out there because it is a nice location, the view is beautiful, and that that is a losing proposition. That's not a money maker at all, at all. The, the, the golf course is our money. And we do lots of other things, don't we? We don't just do golf the golf course. We do, you know, um, sell tickets for drawings and um, having a, a drawing at the end of the um, April. So I understand what you're saying. And you know, Tom's father was a charter member of the golf course, the Rochester Country Club. But I, I don't know if your dad might have been to also. And it would be a hate, it would be a shame to lose it. So, so thank you so much. And like I said, maybe you'll ponder the question and Lenny, what uh, what's a reconditioned uh, chipper run? About ten thousand. Ten grand. <laughs> for a halfway decent one. Ten grand would get them in the business. If you want to start a campaign, I'll be your first one. I'll do a thousand dollars towards your chip. Well, I mean, it, it, you're right. It is important. My dad was a trustee for a lot of years. I think a lot of people have been trustees out there. So, uh, but if you want to start that up, I'll start your company. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. That. You're welcome. Thank you, you know, for your time. It's better than having me and three grand to have stuff hauled away. Well, but, let's get you in the business. Yeah, <laughs> so let's get you in the business. Thing. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks for your time. We didn't mean to take this much time for this. So. There you go. Thank you. Well, I'm serious, Greg. Okay. You find nine other people. Let's get you in the business. Are you approaching the community foundation at all? No, we usually give to them. Their <laughs> 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 they're getting the racks for each other. Yeah, they have their, yeah. I think it's their community grant program. <coughs> that they, they offer, I mean, it's open to a, a wide variety of things. So it's certainly something for you guys to, to look at. And, it's, it's and I don't know if any of you play golf, but the course is, the last two or three years, it's just fabulous. I mean, we have a group of people bad. that have really kept <coughs> this, it's, Boy, it was really getting seedy there for a while, you know. And when Tom and I came on, it, it, it wasn't just us. We got a good group of people, and of course, it's really nice. We have people come and just go, oh, you didn't really realize this was this nice little course. And it's really, this, this last four to five years, we've really pushed to make it. It's small, it's nine holes, but it, it has its purpose in this community. You can bring your kids out to play, and you're not going to bother people. You know, it's a small course to start on for the younger kids. Um, the old people like it because it's not so far. <laughs> you don't have to hit so hard. You don't have to drive so far. It's, uh, it's just nice to have it. It's, it, it. There's a place for it in this community, and I'd like to keep it there. I think all that history is going to be well on the community foundation series. Community grant program. That would be Brian Johnson. Yeah. Give it a shot. Thank you. I think it's worth that try. Okay. Oh, uh, that takes us down into uh, department reports.
for February, uh, Rochester Fire had the following call. Structure fires, two in Richland Township, one in Rochester Township. Vehicle fires, one in Richland Township. Field fires, two in Rochester Township. Furnace fires, one in Rochester Township. Auto fire alarms, two in the city, one in Rochester Township. Mutual aid fires, one in Argus. Gas leaks, two in the city. Accidents, two in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. Medical assist, 14 in the city. Eight in Rochester Township, two in Newcastle Township, three in Richland Township. CO checks, two in the city. Rescues, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Service calls, four in the city for a total of 53 calls, and we did one drill. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Uh, any update on our engine? Uh, it'll start fabrication at the cabin chassis in, in Charlotte, Michigan, at Spartan, probably in the May, first part of June. It'll be six weeks in the process there. Once it gets significantly down the line, Spencer will then uh, jig the frame and they'll start the body construction. Uh, we'll go for a final inspection in cabin chassis. Um, probably mid-July, end of July, and then I'll get moved to South Haven to meet up with a body that's being fabricated at Spencer at South Haven, and then we'll take delivery September. Okay, it's kind of a lot. Any questions for the chief? We are um, <coughs> meeting Thursday out at Wilson's Body Shop. Well, we're going to start looking at some battery-operated rescue tools. Uh, we have hydraulic tools in the rescue truck now. They're tethered to a 100-foot line. Um, if we have a vehicle roll off uh, such an embankment, well, we do have a portable pump that has 25 feet of hose. Uh, the batteries now with the lithium um, 80 or 60 volt batteries have, have come a long way where you can actually do a complete extrication without changing your batteries out. So that opens up our options. Um, We've all seen the, the videos of all the high, the accidents this winter. Uh, we do cover 31 from 110 all the way down to Specs Corner plus 110 square miles within the county. Uh, so we're, we're going to look at these these rescue tools. But uh, if anyone's interested, I think my morning session canceled. Uh, the, the vendor had a family emergency, but at one o'clock I'm going to have a vendor come. We're going to go to Wilson's. We're actually going to cut a couple cars up with the battery operated tools. If you're inclined to come out and take a look. When is that, Tom? Maybe Thursday. Next week. This week. This week. This week. This week. This Thursday, the 28th at uh, 1 o'clock at uh, Wilson's Body Shop. <laughs> Don't paint me skeptical, but batteries and having the own um, I, I, I was a skeptic for years, <coughs> but right now, um, most of the permits around us, uh, Warsaw, Peru, um, South Bend, that they, they have them, and they found that they, they've actually been able to use these tools in other implications. Um, we have a downed fireman uh, that's trapped. Uh, before, we couldn't bring in the hydraulic tools, but with, if, if this is just a handheld battery-operated tool, so if he's trapped, I can go in with the spreaders and lift the uh, debris off of it. So uh, it really kind of opened up outside-the-box thinking with these. Uh, my my placement on this would probably get a new engine with the extra storage compartments because the rescue truck by far would be the first truck in the accident. The engine would be the second and having these extra set of tools um, would, would, like I said, multi car <coughs> vehicle accidents or if, if we have more than one. We do have at the old set too that's on the, uh, the backup engine that, that operates off its own small gasoline uh, powered pump. The, the rescue has electric over hydraulic for the main, and then the portable unit is gasoline over hydraulic. So, like I said, plug and play um, with these batteries. Um, have an extra set on the truck that'll get trickle charged the whole time. So, in the event it, it is an extended extrication, we can swap out. Um, so it's just, like I said, they've been out for years. Uh, when, when Chase, when you were on, they were out. And at the time, the, the tools weren't proven, but. With, with the technology and the lithium batteries, it's now the time to, uh, to start looking seriously at, at this tool. I'm going to come out at 1 o'clock, and if you make me a believer, we're going to call them and see if they make a weed eater. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I have yet to get a battery powered weed eater. Well, if you, you, you haven't tried a 60 volt, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's big old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're a little bit bigger, so it's not your typical. Uh, yeah. but, but then again, the one I'm looking at too is, is made uh, right in Valparaiso. So they're making them locally in Valparaiso. Oh, okay. So if we have a problem, yeah, they're close. we can go there and then they're using DeWalt's battery, so it's not a proprietary battery. Some of the, the manufacturers have their own proprietary battery. So like first, it, it's like a $500 replacement battery versus going to, to Lowe's or Home Depot and, and ordering one for 100 bucks. So there's a little bit of a difference in, in that. So. Okay. But we're, we're looking at, at both. I said the other tool is the Hearst tool that has it, its proprietary battery, but it has its, its features over the other ones. So we're going to look and really be scrutiny of both of these to try to get the best. <coughs> I look forward to seeing All right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Two shots. Oh, good evening. In the month of February, we had a total of 17 accidents. One of those were personal injury. We issued 77 warnings, uh, 76 were for traffic on only one city ordinance. We are already starting to, to ramp up our, our spring ordinance enforcement, with making sure people are staying on top of debris and trash, and, and it's going to be mowing season here before so too long, so we'll be, we'll be hitting those we, we ordinances and, and grass ordinances pretty heavy here in the next month or so. Uh, there were a total of 87 offenses. 38 traffic, 44 criminal, 5 juvenile, 48 case reports, 547 calls for service. Mm -hmm. Got lockouts the last two months, didn't I? Yeah, we didn't have it, John. Does that have anything to do with the new judge? No, 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 we broke a window and they could call us. <laughs> Uh, 10 to a big, 32 people incarcerated. And then you have to try and put people are lost for it. Yeah, buddy, you walk up to, to a window and, and break out and say, there you go, stop calling. <laughs> um, we did get our board in finally. Uh, it came in a couple of weeks ago. We've already got a decal by uh, Chandler's, and it's up in Columbia City right now. Cops here getting, getting everything installed, lights, and, and sirens and all that fun stuff. That'll probably take, I'll probably have three or four weeks before we get it back. Just um, because it's in the queue? Yeah, yeah, and it takes, I mean, they, they have stages, and, and that one, they've had the stuff in stock. Waiting. Yeah, yeah, waiting for the car to show up, and they've got other vehicles sure. they're, they're doing in the process, so they said whenever you get it, bring it up and we'll get to it. And it beats fire trucks, that's all I can really care about. Yeah. When my truck comes, it comes with all the stuff on it. I see. batteries are improved. That's all I have once you get it. Any questions for Chief Shots? Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. Next up. You're on projects. I found my bag. I took it out of my hand. I'm not done with you are. On the 4th Street project, HIS is cutting grade for sidewalks and surface grading and they're, uh, they're close to black earth. Uh, EV, they did 2,200 feet of curb last week in two days. So on the north side, the curbing's in. They started pouring sidewalks. You know, that's amazing ever since... Uh uh, Mr. Heidi's appearance here at the last council meeting, man, he's got it kicked in gear out there. Thank you, sir. Unplugged that for <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. They uh, started pouring sidewalk this morning. They started just east of Prairie Mills Drive, and they put in 520 feet today. So, and it was moving forms tonight. That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're moving right along. And we have our meeting Thursday at 10 o'clock for the update on everything? Yes. Okay. okay. Then the FWHA project, uh, we sent out 10 requests for proposals. 
to uh, the NDOT quali pre-qualified consultants. This is for the uh, sidewalk grant that we received in for 2003. Yeah. Uh, they have till April 10th to respond. We've talked to four, and I've got two letters back of, that they're not going to be able to do it, so or they're not going to submit any letters of interest. Um, <coughs> then there's a 50 50 sidewalk project. I've got two contractors. They're uh, working on getting us quotes. I asked for them to come back by Thursday. 28. So we're so still be ready for the board works at that time. Yeah. yeah. That's all I got. Our lighting project now, we've got everything finished that we had on our initial rounds on the lighting project. Yeah, I, I got to talk to her again because I found two the other day that, that were having to change. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Randy? How many do we have on a list of the uh, 50, 50? Nine. Nine. Awesome. I have a question, um, and I'm not sure if this would be for Randy, um, in regards to the sidewalk. Starting here at the um, 4th and Main, or just after the travel uh, office there, Ford, there's the black top, and then there's the white lines, and I'm assuming that's the sidewalk designated walk area does so is that uh the city being casey still here i believe that was yes. a grandfathered situation from they can't do that anymore you can't ask all the sidewalk anymore but so it technically is still city it's a city right away right. Yeah. okay yeah um i've noticed when they get busy just because i live off uh fourth street here but i've noticed Cars will park a lot all along there, and I've seen them park over that sidewalk several times. And um, mostly just concerned, there are some handicapped folks uh, over in Precinct 1, closer to the city pool um, that I know personally, that use those sidewalks. And so that's been sort of a concern. I don't know really how to address it, but um, mm -hmm. and I don't, so I don't know if that's you or, mm -hmm. okay? Be Andy. Yep. Okay. We'll take care of it. Well, and actually, too, uh, Knock on wood, once this project's finished on 4th Street, we will be going back for another bite at the Community Corrections Apple, or Community Crossings Apple, not Community Corrections. We may be out fighting at it, we do. Uh, community Crossings uh, uh, grant program to uh, bring 4th Street all the way up to Main Street. And, you know, that project stops at the railroad tracks. So, so that's one of the items we have on our list. There's a question on my just be, do what you can with uh, the money that you can, can obtain. Yeah. Well, it's looking nice. I'll say that. It's oh, been man. Thank you. Developing really fast all of a sudden. I, Wes must have done something. I know you'd like to give uh, Mr. E&B over their credit, but Wes, I mean, splatters us. Next thing you know, we've got curbs and everything for miles. <laughs> you didn't see him out there with a shovel, did you? <laughs> Thanks, Wes. No, uh, it, it is moving along very well. Yeah. We'll have Mr. Heidi up here in a minute and perhaps he share with us a little bit of what's going on here. Uh, but we do, we meet every, now that it's kicked back in, we did, the winter, we did before the winter, but we meet every Thursday at 10 o'clock at EMB for a, a construction meeting and an update on everything and how it's, how it's progressing. So it's, it's moving in a direction. Uh, anything else? Okay. Thank you, sir. Good job. Lynn Conley, Street Department of the Parks. Um, we've been uh, raising storm drains on 10th and Jefferson. I'm glad you finished that statement. You tell me you've been raising cake or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Um, we've been working on replacing this and faded the signs. Um, pretty much got the west side done. We're uh, moving these. Uh, can, can you tell us, the, 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 the council right off the end, how many signs we have replaced? Um, I would say about 175 of them all together. Street Miss, signs, missing, faded, stop signs, grass. speed signs. We've upgraded everything. And we're going to continue uh, east and keep uh, moving east as we tack a uh, section at, the t at a time. Um, we've been out patching holes, not picking up 
yard debris, bags, old leaves, and brush, cleaning storm drains. We replaced the metal on our uh, lower shed that's been damaged over the years. Um, we got our quota of control for the salt. It's all mixed and the shed's full. We got the sweeper out and we're cleaning up the streets in the west side of the town. Um, that's all I have for the street. Any questions on that? Chipper and uh, leaf machine? Uh, yeah, I got the, the chippers out and um, use about three days we can cover the whole town and then we uh, I can have that crew go to doing fine for patching and then the, and then the, uh, we got the back machine out um, running throughout the whole city. And we got a lot of leaves sitting out now. There's a lot of cleanup going on. I, I, I alternate every week. Uh, one week I'll start out the lake and come back towards town and uh, right. another week I'll start on the uh, west side and move towards the east side. Of the, uh, I already know these answers. This is for the benefit of everyone. Oh, I <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm directing you here, but okay. I am not a real buddy. <laughs> uh, that's, that's all I have for the, the street. Any questions on that? Good job, honey. Anybody got anything for money? Thank you. Um, and I like your new shirts, too. It's pretty nice, but. Thanks. You bet. Um, out of out the park, there isn't much going on. Uh, nobody's back to work yet. And I, they're going to start back up uh, Monday. Uh, but my objectives were to, and this is no reasonable order of doing this, this is some stuff that I got on my mind and jotted uh, them down was uh, picking up the sticks, removing the leaves around the mountain and away from the basketball court, opening up and cleaning all the restrooms. and. Uh, on that note, I'm going to probably be next weekend before I open up the, the restrooms because we're still in some cold climactic weather. I'm yeah, I, I was asked that last week. Yeah. So I'm sorry about the inconvenience. They're, like they're winterized right now. Yeah, I'd it's like to open them up now, but then I'm going to be able to have the pipes freeze up. So by the next weekend, they'll be open and can all the ones being cleaned and maintained. The pavilion looks very nice. Yeah. It did turn out nice. That looks good. Um, you want to make sure too that we uh, pick pick your tick folder list up and contact our gentleman who's finishing the ADA uh, disc golf course part of yeah. the ADA. Yeah. Um, we then uh, we're gonna put out the tables that have been in storage. Uh, do maintenance on all the equipment. The baskets back up for rule 11 on the disc golf. Uh, do a walk around on all the parts for a safety check on all the equipment. Put out one of the trash cans that was put up. Uh, make a sweep of the park with the uh, vacuum machine. Um, that's about all I have for that. And then uh, we uh, purchased two new park trucks one for the golf maintenance and one for the uh, park department. So as we get four people working, they all can have their own vehicle to, to drive. Have, uh, have you had an opportunity to uh, take a look and see what the winter uh, has done to our fence around the Slinning Hill? Before? It still looks good. Good. Uh, and the reason I asked that lady told me her son was prevented from flying out into uh, one of those trees by that fence. So. It's, it's, doing, it's doing what it's supposed to. I just want to make sure if there's any yeah, dents or anything. Yeah, it, looks, it looks fine. I was, okay. I was just by there the other day, and it looked, it looked good. Great. So. Anything for Lenny? No. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you. Marcus. Last month, let's just say that. Yes, you did. All right, in my lab had normal, a normal plant testing. I ordered my first load of uh, aluminum sulfate. That's for our phosphorus removal project that we just completed. So that will be here finally tomorrow. Uh, our lab analysis report from the month is complete. I just finished the lab plant application report. I installed a new gas cylinder scale for our disinfection season, which starts April 1st. Um, and installing a new effluent meter. 
our, and our plant calibrations on the meters for 2019 are complete. I had Thorpe B. here to give me some quotes on some new meters and charts. The last upgrade was an 09, so we're way behind times. Uh, bio tower clarifier number two is now back online. Uh, we are training right now for our island pumping, which we're going to start Friday. That's for our fossils for removal. We fix the light over our aeration tank. We replace that with LED. I set up my meeting with Crosby Construction for April 11th for my uh, next expensive project for my digestive project. Um, we sent our backhoe to Westside Sales in South Bend for a 100 plus point inspection. Um, we clean our final contact tank, prepare for disinfection season. I just finished my annual pre treatment inspection report to IDM. That's for 2018. Um, and my collections in normal locates. I did have one major backup this last month on Park Road, our main was blocked between 13th Street and the school. And that was caused by Reeks and Grease. Um, our Vector truck is now back from Craig's. It's finally back online. And our Aqua truck, Aquatech truck is now back online. Um, Blacker Complex, uh, they'll be hooking into the list station, which just got approved last week. Um, we're still waiting for our air vac station B pump to arrive. Um, it's the original pump, broke finally from 1988. That should be here within the next week. Okay, so it hasn't arrived yet. Correct. Okay. okay. Uh, we cleaned Arborwoods and 11th Street lift stations, uh, and currently around the shop, we're cleaning up and gathering items for the city auction on day 60. That's all I have. Anything for Marcus? If you would. Marcus, jot down 9 o'clock Friday morning. Uh, once you come in and we'll take a look at the, uh, at the uh, infrastructure uh, suggestions for the next uh, projects we've, we've discussed. Let's see. Can you All give right. me some uh, input there on what, what we're going to go do? 9 o'clock. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Great work. Gary. Bad meters, did locates, backwash the beds, did shut off, swept them off the plant. Um, we started our asset management and inventory program, um, which that is complete, except for one thing I've got to do with Shada. Um, we put together a new desk for Kristen City Hall, took her old one out, put the new one in. Randy Carr and, and I also uh, filed a walking trail for Lenny um, when their equipment was down. We cleaned the vehicles, reorganized the meter room. And then digs that were performed, we fixed a six inch water main leak at 1125 East 9th Street. And we also fixed an eight inch water leak at 1638 East Lincoln Street, which the sewer department assisted with that. And there's a whole list of call outs. You don't need me to go over them. I'll take any questions you have on them. Uh, should note that both Marcus and Derek are working on the infrastructure project list. Uh, much like over on the first street, I think John and I, that. And I, I believe you pretty much earmarked. Stop me if I'm saying something out of school, but we believe Lucas Street's the area zero in on for our next infrastructure. Okay, we've, we've had <laughs> we've had uh, lots of things telling us we need to probably do that. And. Uh, have we, have we, uh, have we got any have any meetings? Or any information back okay. yet? Okay, um, why don't you stop by and see me in the morning. Let's, let's discuss it. Okay. Okay. Anybody got any questions for uh, Gary? Thank you, Mark, this straight to you. <laughs> Did you hear that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, apparently he knows something. Go up in here. Um, not to, uh, give you guys part of your big head, but uh, the two, I guess, say, rookie superintendents, those two you just mentioned, doing a great job. You guys are here. 
<laughs> Marcus, you brought him along. So. <laughs> Everybody's doing a good job, but you two are coming right on. Good job. Okay, uh, that takes care of the department heads' uh, reports of committees. Uh, we've got a new committee report. The um, Lake Manitoba Association. David and I were talking the other day. We hear from RDP and we hear from the Redevelopment Commission. Well, Ellen is one of our biggest jewels in the community. I'm probably just thinking, I wish I could have another meeting to go to, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too old to volunteer at the Elks every day. <laughs> that was a pretty good shot, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. yeah, not as good as the one you gave. I, I do need to point out, it had nothing to do with Horse Street. The guys were out there doing a back with the top. And it's the workers were doing it. That's not it's true. Not they all refer to him as Mr. Wonderful. So, uh, I'm here for Lake Association tonight, uh, and I'll take, I know it's been a long week, I'll make it extremely brief, but uh, the purpose, the mission of the Lake Association is to promote further understanding of Lake Manitoba's watershed and protect, restore, and manage the ecosystem of which it is part. Uh, you know, in 2006, uh, when the hydrilla hit the lake, uh, the, the state closed the lake and started uh, spraying the lake and took it back to virtually no weeds. Uh, so there was a period there where not much was done with Lake Manitoba. Uh, really didn't need to be, you know, it was in their hands. Uh, we spent uh, over $200,000 last year uh, testing water, dredging, uh, working on water quality. Uh, we have about 50% participation in the landowners around the lake in our association. Uh, we realize that uh, we need to do a lot better than that. Uh, we've changed our due structure some. Uh, but we, we feel like with a uh, little education, people understand really what we're doing, we will have better participation in the association. David, I don't want to put you on the spot. You can't answer this fine. But how many members do you have? Or, or this a little thing? over 300. Last year. So, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to getting out and doing a lot more education this year. Uh, we've got uh, a dredging project we finished up last fall that you probably saw over at that Graham Ditch there at the DNR launch. Um, the, the weeds have come back. Uh, if anyone remembers the weeds before uh, the hydrilla and, and all that uh, chemical treatment, the weeds in Lake Manitou as a shallow lake have become quite prevalent. Uh, and were really uh, a hindrance to property owners around the lake. Uh, the weeds have come back. We've spent a lot of time and money monitoring the, the weeds as they come back because clearly we need a good uh, established weeds to keep that lake clean. Uh, the, lead, the weeds have come back with a vengeance. So this year we're looking at uh, treating uh, the high travel areas uh, so that as the boats go around, we won't be chopping weeds and doing some of that. So we'll, uh, in addition to that, we're going to have a program where uh, individuals are permitted to uh, take care of 645 square feet uh, at their own property. So we'll have kits available to uh, people around the lake if they want to participate in that. We're, we're doing a bulk order to, to, to save pricing for everyone so they, if they want to treat around their peers and everything. To, control their swim areas. But we, we understand the value of keeping that lake uh, as, as good as you can get it. With all the watershed, you know, we've seen in the paper in the last week of, of the, we're, we're teaming up and working with the soil conservation folks and working on looking at the watershed and what conservation efforts we can use to help the sediment inflow coming in from Rain Creek. Uh, that'll be an ongoing study. Uh, but uh, we, we need to to make sure we're doing what we can to keep uh, the, the property values and the desirability of that lake at the, the most. You know, the, when you look at quality of life in Fulton <coughs> County in the city of Rochester, uh, Lake Manitou is a very big part of that, and we're working hard to make sure that uh, we can keep it uh, what it is today and improve upon it. So I uh, just appreciate a couple minutes to bring you guys up to speed. I, I told Ted I'd be more than happy to come back every couple, three months if there's something new to keep you updated on what we're doing. Uh, feel free to give me a call at any time. Uh, we can actually meet in these chambers the third Thursday uh, at 7 o'clock if you ever want to attend. That's all I have on Lake Manitou, unless you guys have questions. 
is a very important, not only a jewel for our community and drawing people here, but it's a large part of our tax base. Folks who must be here giving us an update once in a while is probably no mission to the past. So certainly look forward to you doing that, David. And it doesn't have to be you, it could be Kenny, it could be anybody just keeping us kind of in the loop. Like, everybody agree that's probably a benefit to us? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, anybody have any other thing for David? Any questions on 4th Street while I'm standing here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but things aren't moving. I uh, think things are moving. Uh, it is anticipated. Uh, weather cooperates, and uh, uh, we have an asphalt plant that uh, is going to be firing up. It uh, got power surge today. It took out some uh, circuit boards, uh, but we're still hopeful to have that uh, open and calibrated tomorrow. If that happens, we'll have asphalt in front of the curbs on Thursday. Uh, we'll start removing the south side on Friday, get those curbs in next week. Uh, we're anxiously awaiting the thing that happens. The road's a little wider. You just break in to use the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Services, as you know, the, we were getting ready to go back to the county to find out if they're going to fund the next six months, and I believe that they have. They fully funded. Yeah. Fully funded yeah. FedCo, so we're funded for this year. Um, the business planning class is coming up. Uh, they'll have orientations on the 20th and the 28th of this month. Um, we've had a lot of people go through that, and I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I can get that. It's a, it was we talked about it in the meeting, and it was big number, I just didn't jot it down. Um, what we did mostly is work on our annual meeting. Um, we were going to have an annual meeting open to the public to kind of market FedCo, to let everyone know what we do, because, you know, a lot of people ask, why do we need FedCo? And so we're open to answer that question. Um, we, did, we went through a PowerPoint. Um, did we, you know, the members give feedback on it. We made some, you know, proposed some changes. Um, one of the things we talked about doing is instead of having one large meeting, we would schedule a meeting in each community um, in the county so that, you know, people don't have to travel very far to come see the PowerPoint and get a presentation. And that was pretty much it. So, any questions? Just to add to that, uh, John's aware of this. Uh, Mr. Bowley over at East Peoria, he's moving along at his own pace, but he is looking at making a, another acquisition in the community. So getting himself pretty well established, uh, although he has not broken ground at the site yet. Uh, but that's that's coming. He's getting himself entrenched here, which was good to see. And the other piece of information we had, we uh, we heard from uh, Brad Cashaw, the senior vice president of Deans last uh, week. And Deans had said, listen, we decided to liquidate some assets. So if you have somebody who's interested in that plant, call me directly. And that's the first time they've stepped out to do that. Things have not been going very well for Haynes. We've been keeping up with them. 
Wall Street Journal or anything, and they are liquidating some assets. Okay, uh, any other questions on Fed Hill? <coughs> okay, uh, Terry's not here on the Redevelopment Commission. We'll say there was a Redevelopment Commission meeting since the last council meeting, and uh, we are investigating the uh, uh, cost to complete the uh, road out of Apache Drive from the, uh, the area there in front of Schnabel Tears and depending on where the bank is out to 14. We'll be making the street there all the way out to 14 with drainage in the end of the street and getting some pricing on that so, project. Uh, we believe that part of developing that area back there is having an entrance and an exit, two, two points of, of entrance there, one off 14 and then of course one off of uh, 25. So uh, that's, that's in the process. You heard about wings, etc. Uh, and is there anything else cooking, Casey, that we missed? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Takes us down to the park board, Mason's Hill. I didn't make that meeting. Shana, were you at that meeting? No. Okay. The BCA and Council on Aging, Marty? BZA uh, would normally meet tomorrow, but that meeting has been uh, canceled for lack of activity. And our Council on Aging meeting was uh, a short one as uh, Transpo Director and the RSVP Director were both attending other meetings. So uh, Georgia reported from Council on Aging that uh, she has had a meeting with Jillian, at the new director at the chamber. Uh, they have presented the budget to the United Way. And uh, Fire Marshal made a visit to the facility with uh, two very small items uh, that needed attention, and those have been taken care of. So uh, uh, currently, we are looking for a board member and even with the inclement weather of February uh, and uh, the days of uh, no school, uh, which always lowers the number of trips, they still... Do you uh, want a drum roll on this? this did over the no, number, I got a feeling. No, it's, <coughs> it was still over 3,100 trips for the month of February. So, <laughs> Isn't that which amazing? Is astounding. And uh, Gary, at a prior meeting, you had asked about the travel vouchers, and that program is not in place anymore, but Area 5 preschool children, there, there may still be some scholarships at the Community Foundation that they do. But the travel voucher program is no longer in existence. 3,100 trips, or that, that is totally amazing. How many buses are so, uh, There are 16 vehicles. Wow. All volunteer drivers, right? No, they're paid. Are they paid? They're paid. Yep. Well, that's, a, that's a lot of trips and a lot of miles. <laughs> it is a lot of trips. Any questions for Council and Smith? Thank you. Uh, solid waste and animal adoption by <clears throat> Councilman Thompson. Uh, I don't have anything for the animal adoption. Um, for the solid waste, here it goes. The recycling center ships 77 tons of recyclables with a value of $4,122.93. Uh, for the month of January, uh, the county light landfill received 33,529 tons of waste in 23 working days for an average of 1,458 tons per day. Fulton County accounted for 5,341 tons. The rest of Indiana contributed 2,175 <coughs> tons. There's 13 tons of out-of-state trash collected, and the host fee for the month was $43,624.80. The county host fee for the month was $14,094.37. Um, <coughs> since the last meeting, it sold 236 orange bags. Uh, that brings the total of that to 5,911. Um, so far, we've collected $3,151 for disposal of bulk items. 
Um, Stacy touched base with O and R. Um, we're actually going to go ahead and um, update the building with new metal, and O and R is going to go ahead and take that care, take care of that for us. Um, she got bids for three trucks from Shepherds, Mike Anderson, Curl, and Ann Rochester Ford. And we ended up going ahead and um, approving the, the purchase for Rochester Ford. Um, and I think it was yeah, $39,636. Yeah. I forget now what kind of truck that we purchased. Um, and they offered us $7,000 for a trade-in on our 2007 Ford, and then $25 discount on all diesel oil changes. So that comes down to the price of $32,636. Okay. That is it. Any uh, questions for Councilman Thompson? Thanks, Chase. <coughs> Free board, uh, we don't have anything for that. Uh, John, water board? Water board, Derek, uh, sent me a really uh, great uh, <coughs> minutes for the water board, basically telling you that all is running well. Is that a pun? Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> it's that's running it. from the well, right? Running, exactly running well. And Derek does a good job of that. He sent me that. It's basically all we've got to talk about because, hey, everything's going good. That's what we like to don't, hear. Don't say anything about it because it's going smooth. Working fine with no no major problems as what he gave earlier to you, and uh, that has it all. That's uh, how that has everything. I forgot to uh, tell you again. I don't forget that they, we were some of us were walking door to door uh, Sunday chase chase <coughs> and we ran into a guy from Warsaw. Guy from Warsaw who was relocated here. He said. You guys got the best water of anywhere I have lived. Even even Warsaw, you guys have great water. All the filter goes. There's a pat on the back right there. Okay. Uh, Before adjourn, I, yeah. I do have pancakes and sausage tickets for sale. <laughs> Girls softball and the Fulton County Soccer League. So, I got them right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a non actor spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't have any ADA concerns, anything on the legal front. Oh, we do have an ADA concern. Really? I want to make sure. With the inspections with Casey on all of our programs, are we good on this 4th Street? Oh, the guys have been out there a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> when you get done with your inspections, would you please let me know so I can update the transition plan? Thank you. Okay, any, anything, anything else? Oh. Andy, anything from the legal front? Thank you for, uh, for your uh, due diligence on the issues tonight. Sure. Any, anything else? All right, with that being the case, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved by Thompson, yep. seconded by Smith. Those in favor, 5-0.